Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Warland Tactical. Hope you guys have been well. Hope you guys are doing great. I'm throwing out another video. I'm gonna make the videos a little bit quicker in regards to the prepared readiness series that I'm doing based around earthquakes and disasters. Today's episode is going to be based on rescue tools and rescue the equipment. What I think the gear you guys should have and what I know you should have in a rescue situation because I've been there, done that. So let's get to it. Well, we're gonna, first thing we're gonna go over what's called PP&E, personal protective equipment. First thing on my list is a good quality hard hat, a good quality headlamp, because you're gonna be possibly in low light situations, confined spaces. This is very bright LED stream light, and it uses triple A's, which my flashlights use triple A's, these use triple A's. I don't need to carry around two different kind of batteries. That's how I roll. Inside the hard hat, uh, abracadabra, I'm pulling a magic trick out for you. Not really. But I do carry a Husky brand pouch underneath the nice suspension system. You want to make sure they have that. So underneath that is where I carry my safety vest in this pouch. It's a great place to have it. That way I never lose it. So on your safety vest, you want to make sure that it has reflective strips, front and rear, so you're highly visible. When you're in a rescue situation, you want to be visible. The person you're trying to save needs to be able to, needs to work with you and be able to see you to help you find them. That's the goal for that. Next is eye protection. I choose these sealed over glasses goggles because I wear glasses and these are chemical proof chemical resistant it does do a good seal I have used these have tested them in the field they're good to go next I'm going to touch base on is the respirator you want to get one of these the N95 mask is good this is a hell of a lot better it'll last longer you can double up on the filters you can buy different filters for different chemicals this will work in a fire to get you out of the area not to fight the fire to get you out of the smoke. This will protect you, your lungs, and everything else you need to breathe. So gloves. This is an inexpensive pair of gloves. They have sticky rubber bottoms. The top is a mesh material. These are great for wet conditions. These run about nine bucks for three pack. You can also, there's lots of gloves out there. You can also go to blackhawkgear.com. I'll put the links below. These are Storm Sola gloves. These are about 60 bucks. These are fast repel gloves. They're leather, a little bit of Cordura stretch material. Very awesome, very tough gloves. I would use these if I'm gonna use, if I'm gonna deal with rope, if I'm pulling rope, toe straps, etc. These will work too, but my choice is these. Okay, so so far we protected the head, the nose, the throat, the mouth, and the eyes. Hearing protection, I have in my bag. I usually just have uh, earplugs in. If I can get to my medic bag, I have a pair of shooting earmuffs, which I do not have in the video that's in my vehicle. Anyways, but yes, I would throw on my shooting earmuffs. Okay, so PPE is almost covered. We are missing. Obviously, long sleeve shirt, possibly a jacket, steel toed boots, which I have on, and knee pads. Get yourself a good quality pair of knee pads. Home Depot again, very cheap. And I like these because it's a simple attachment, it goes around your pants or your shorts, whatever you're in the wearing at the moment, and they just snap on. Very easy, very easy to adjust and it'll save your knees. Okay, let's go right into the tools. Highly recommend the five pound mini sledge. This works for closed confinement areas and it's great tool. You don't need that big giant sledge. This is a great tool to have to bust open doors, break windows, whatever you need. Next is your flat pry bar. This is a 12 and three quarters inch. You can go a little bit bigger if you want. This one works for me. 
but make sure you get the flat, not the tubular crowbar that you're used to seeing in the movies. The flat pry bar will work good in between the door jams to pry open the doors if you need to. Next, I show this in the other videos, your gas, excuse me, your gas and water shutoff tool has a pry bar and debris hook. These are great. At least if you don't get this, at least get a gas and water turnoff tool because you want to make sure you turn off the appliances before you go in in case there's a leak, gas leak. You don't want to make the situation worse. Next is my new favorite tool is the Stanley Fat Max. Has a pry bar, a nail puller, large crescent wrench, and a hammerhead. It's highly compact, very strong, very durable, awesome tool. I keep it in a cut proof sleeve for a reason because the pry bar on that is very sharp. And plus, it reminds me to put on my PP&E as well, which I left that out. So cut proof sleeves, this is a Kevlar sleeve. You wanna use those in any situation if you've gotta break glass. It's great to protect, you need to have total protection, especially when you carry these. This is the Sawzall Hacksaw by Milwaukee. This thing is awesome. You can get a blade kit by Diablo if you choose to, and you can get blades that'll cut through anything, tree trunks, whatever. Bimetals, which is this one, it'll, meaning that it'll cut through nails, metal, and wood. And it's portable. Just charge it and go if you have power. So for us construction workers, they're usually always charged. Corded option is the Tiger Porta Cable. DeWalt makes, there's many brands out there. This is what I have, the Tiger Porta Cable. This thing's highly, highly durable and strong. This would be great for cutting down doors, whatever. Drywall hatchet, got a hammer on one end, hatchet on the other. Great for cutting open doors, moving debris. You can use it as a debris hook, also a defensive tool. Another hammer option is an ice pick hammer. So it has a point on the back and hammer head on the front. You can definitely drive this through a door to pull the door open. Okay, so we covered uh, light hand tools. It's good to have a toe strap as well. There's a reason why I have this toe strap. So this toe strap will be used to pull open doors, um, lift parts of buildings, whatever I need to do to rescue the person. My next tool is uh, one of my favorites as well. Uh, you off-road guys, you'll know exactly what this is as soon as I grab it. So this tool, if you choose to get this, I'm not telling you to get this, but if you, already, if you choose to get this or if you already have it, you off-road guys, it's not just for lifting up cars when you're changing your tire, when you're broke down, when you're off-roading, or if they're rolled over. This tool will definitely lift a roof. It will definitely move a car. Use your imagination. You can use it as a come along, as a, which is a come along is a, something like a winch, which is where you tie a point here, use the jack, and I'll show you in a second, and you pull the item to you. This is called a high lift. This is a fairly large jack, as you can tell. Basically, you put this item or this part underneath the object you want to lift and you just jack it up. On the top, it has a rotating attachment point to the side, to this side, whatever you want. Like I said, you can use it as a come along to take that, the toe strap, rope, cable, chain, whatever you got, wrap that around the object and you can jack it to you. There's also attachment point on the bottom as well. You can hook a carabiner on there, whatever the hook you got, and jack it as well. It has a metal base on the bottom. You can also buy a, a way bigger plate for setting in mud. That's for the off-road purposes, but you never know if you're in a flood and that will prevent the jack from sinking. So again, this is the high lift. And just so you know, the rating on this is 7,000 pounds that it will lift. Just to double check. So yeah, 7,000 pounds, 
Clamping is 750 pounds. Winch hoist is 5,000 pounds. So that is a big boy tool, big boy tool, but it will get the job done. So again, I hope this uh, helps you guys out. And I know it will. Just pause the video, rewind it, see what the tools that I have, go out there and go shopping. Go buy your tools, get prepared. Let's do this. We're getting closer. We got the evacuation plan done, hopefully. The other video I did was your minimal evacuation kit. And now you got the tools. There's gonna be another episode. We'll go over first aid and your go bag. Everyone has go bags, but that comes into play as well. So stay tuned guys, like, subscribe, have a great day. And again, go buy some stuff.